Hey, what is going on? It's me, Caleb. And I am with my pal, Josh. Josh. He's mic'd because he's probably going to be talking most of this series. But the purpose of this series is to build a computer. And we're going to talk about everything you need to know to do that, and specifically with the developer in mind. So what stuff are you going to need to run your Visual Studio and compile and all that junk. Sound good? Yep. So he is a computer technician, runs a computer store, and has pretty much been a geek his whole life. Yes. So. I've been tearing apart computers for over 10 years, uh, A-plus certified for whatever it's worth now, <laughs> and uh, generally love hardware and keep up with it. Nice. Thinkful should be your go-to resource for securing a job in tech. The thing about Thinkful is that they succeed when you succeed. It's their job to get you a position in software engineering, data science, data analytics, product design, or product management. Whatever your goal might be, Thinkful is there to guide you through the process beginning to end. So go look at their courses and see if one fits your needs. The great thing here is that you get a position in tech or you get your tuition back, so there's no risk to going through Thinkful. Check them out, I'll leave a link in the description. So I know a little bit, but I'm pretty stupid, so he's gonna be guiding us through the key parts and how to know what we need. And our, our idea here is to create a budget system. So all this is about 400 bucks, but we're gonna say in what situations you might want extra, or if this might be too much, how you can save some money, depending on the needs, because everybody's needs are different. Yes. I would consider this to be the best value for the typical, what I would call programmer's needs, but everyone's different, and we obviously have some specializations in the field that are worth mentioning. And like as a general rule, as you spend more money, you get less returns. So 800 bucks is not necessarily going to give you twice the computing power. No. All right, so what are we gonna be doing in this series? This episode, we're just going to be introducing the different pieces. Then we're gonna be sharing info about the processor. And then we're gonna be sharing information about memory and then the motherboard and all the other components we're gonna and then put it inside this box here. And then we'll get into some key things on utilities as well as uh, maybe we'll we'll have a Windows installation but also maybe a Linux installation different things you can check to make sure your computer is working right and how to do some key development stuff with Windows I'm gonna probably show you guys maybe how to compile in C and C++ and all this different stuff on Windows so does that sound good yes yeah, starting from the ground up just parts right to the software oh um, yeah forgot he also started a YouTube so, if you want to get some more of our pretty faces, check out his channel, link in the description. And we have a video doing a similar thing, but from a more general perspective, not so much development. So, if you want to build an office computer, that might be the way you should go. So, what we have here is all the parts you would need to build a computer. It doesn't really seem like a lot, does it? Not really. No. You would think, like, for such a big box, it would just be packed with stuff. Eh, it's mostly air. So this big board here is the motherboard, and we're going to go into detail with what all this junk on here is. But all of these other pieces are going to connect to the motherboard. So yep. this is like the this. example I gave was the mothership of the computer. Mm -hmm. This here, it's a little square. Oh, yeah. It's the processor. This goes in the motherboard, the RAM goes in the motherboard, the memory, and the storage goes in the motherboard. So what I wanna do is I wanna talk about each one of these pieces individually and say what they're for and basically give you the parts list so you can go buy these parts if you wanted. And maybe I'll leave some links in the description for that as well. To start off, we have the processor. Everything runs on this. This is what does math in your computer. This is what a program is compiled with. Uh, if you're ever writing a machine code, you definitely know, you should know what a processor is. Because you're telling this thing, hey, put this memory over here. Um, right here we have the Ryzen 3 processor. Great for fall 2019, but who's to say where stuff will go, but... So what's the, the clock speed and... This is an entry-level processor. It's quad-core, 3.7 gigahertz. Sounds pretty good to me. Uh, it gets the job done. It really does. Yeah, what's, this, what's this run at the time of this video? Uh, I picked this up for $80. This is a sale. Nice. But um, you can expect to pay about $100. Huh. So what can you get for like $300? $300, you can get something that looks literally exactly the same as this. <laughs> but <laughs> the specs are what you really focus in on this. Um, so while it's made physically 
to look the same. You can get a Ryzen 7 3800X, eight cores, 16 threads, uh, just a beast of a processor. Now, what would that be necessary for? Is the general developer, the person watching this, going to need to spend 300 plus on a processor? No, I don't believe so. You spend most of your time in like Notepad++ or <laughs> Visual Studio and you know, it's programming is a lot of like mental yeah. angst and Google search, Google searching. It's 90% <laughs> just writing the right thing, not 90% yeah. typing. Yeah, so while doing stuff, it's the same reason I wouldn't recommend an author who writes books to buy the six, the you know thousand dollar computer. Just get your three hundred dollar laptop and you're good. Yeah. Now there's probably a little bit more demand than an author. <laughs> yeah, but a little bit more demand, and there are, there's also demand like say you work in the video game industry oh, or yeah. you work with um, testing really large database applications locally. Well, yeah. You, yeah, you might want to look into higher But honestly, core this is what's going to make a huge difference. And this is the storage. So this is solid state. Yes, solid state storage. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> we don't find hard drives anymore in computers unless you're dealing with like media and you, you need something that's cheap. Yeah. But this works. It is great performance. This is one terabyte picked up for about 100 bucks. Yeah. And honestly, a terabyte is probably a lot. There's a high cost to start development you have to get your id and all that stuff but most of your files are not going to take up that no, much space no they're really tiny i would only recommend um, to get like a four terabyte drive if you're working in media and you need to transfer big files really quickly but for the average person one terabyte's good you'll never have to worry about it you can even run a few virtual machines and it's it's used to have a lot of space this is the fan it goes on top of the processor and we're going to get into this more when we talk about processors we just want to do a little comparison. This is the, the more expensive processor. Right, so. so we'll hold them up side by side here. You probably can't tell the difference unless you're reading really close. These are exact same, same electrical pins. Um, how they perform is different though. Uh, this is the eight core one I was talking about and 16 threads and, and it comes really with, great. Uh, this contraption, whatever the heck it is. Yes, this is the AMD Wraith Spire cooler. Um, copper and big fan RGB and then over here you got like the you know it's the base stock cooler there's nothing to write home about this well, cool you know we'll go over that the differences and you know why does this look like this and this looks like this but for now we'll move on to power supply that, yes. yes that scary black box over there you should pick that up Whoa. oh geez <laughs> So when you're connecting all these components, they need a power supply. And I'm not going to say much more than find a good power supply calculator, which is like put in your parts and, you know, you need a power supply with this much wattage. And our general principle is, you know, we're trying to make this budget friendly, but we're trying to make it high value. So don't, yeah. don't cut it cheap on what powers all your junk. Yeah. So this is actually a name brand EVGA. It's a two year warranty which is really high. Most for, of these have warranty. Most of this stuff has yes, warranty. Most of this stuff is, is built so good that they're able yeah. to give these good warranties. Yeah. And even if you don't ever claim your warranty, it's kind of like a validation of, hey, we're willing to, to say our product will last longer than yes. most of the competitor products. When I look for parts, that's what I look at. So find a good power supply that's name brand, um, that reaches your power specifications. And also don't go way above it. There's no reason to buy a thousand watt power supply for our basic yeah, it's build that might use 250 watts at most. Now this, this is RAM, 16 gigabytes. Uh, is that enough? Yeah. Cool. For most people. <laughs> so this, is, this will fill one slot. So if for any reason you needed another one, you could fill the other slot with another one, have 32 gigs. Yes. What the crap is this? That is a DVD drive. Uh, you don't need it. <laughs> I mean, you honestly don't. Um, as 2019 happens and comes to a close, we're gonna see less and less of these. Yeah. They're good to keep around for like compatibility reasons. So I know that I do a lot of media stuff, so I generally like to include these. Yeah. Burn DVDs, people love it, whatever. But optional. But not needed. <laughs> Actually, what we're going to install our operating system with is this. It's a USB 3.0 drive, and it's going to make our life so much better and faster to do it that way than use a traditional disk. 
Cool. So let's go through the cost of each one of these components real quick. And right. also we have the case. We never talked about that, but nothing too special. No. <laughs> Find a good case. Uh, you don't need a high-end case to cool yeah. <laughs> the basic of parts. So this case fits this board. What's the case cost? What's the board cost? All right. Well, let's go over prices of stuff. The case is $30, right. which is amazing. <laughs> this thing? This is about $55 at, at the time. All right, the processor, make sure I pick up the right one. Yes, for this <laughs> build, I picked up the Ryzen 3 3200G. It was a $80 processor, quad core, I found it to be an amazing value. Terabyte M2 drive? 100 bucks. Good deal. <laughs> it's NVMe as well. Again, um, it's a high performance drive, it's not cheap. Okay. RAM? RAM was $72. Yeah, that's uh, still up from the Bitcoin mining um, joy. <laughs> this thing? Power supply was $37. This thing? 20 bucks. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Cables? It's all included. All right, cool. And the, the fan came with the processor, right? Yep. All right, so I think we covered everything. Yep. It comes with a total of about 380. Now, if you're watching this, you might be like, where's the, the graphics card? Oh, uh, that's actually in here with yep. the processor. We have embedded graphics, so if you're first time builder, don't think that you need a big graphics card. I was saying when people think they want to build a computer, their first thought is I'm going to get this boss like $1,000. Yeah, everyone talks about, card. everyone is talking about the GTX or the RTX cards and like you have to get this to game and all the games when you start them up, they say powered by NVID NVIDIA. <laughs> but no, um, it has some entry level graphics that are just built into the CPU. They're in here and then they go out the motherboard and it's good. So if you're doing more graphic intense stuff, would you consider investing in a, a graphics card? Absolutely. So maybe, you know, if you're doing some game development or any kind of If you're using like the that. Unreal Engine, if you are making models in AutoCAD, if you are using Blender, all of those programs can you make excellent use of a graphics card. Something that comes to mind is a lot of developers like to have two or three screens. Yeah. I don't know why to get a nice even tan, but um, <laughs> this this $80 processor can support those three screens. Okay. So this okay. build will support three screens. We don't have to yep. do anything extra. Nope, no extra. Nice. Yeah. But I need six. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that's the conclusion of episode one. We talked about all the basic parts. Again, links in the description. I keep <laughs> scooting away from the microphone here. If you have any questions, leave a comment and check out Josh's channel and check out the next episode because we're going to go into depth for these parts. All right, thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Peace mm -hmm. out.